this is the Provoke Brawn, and prepare to be impressed because this is a 49-inch super ultra-wide gaming monitor with a reasonable price tag. This is a monitor that sports a resolution of 5120 by 1440 with a 32 by 9 aspect ratio that really fills up the desk and looks pretty amazing in a number of different games. So in this video, I'm going to show this monitor off, talk about the features and highlights and some of the problems I've had with it, but some of the things that are awesome. Now, this is a great alternative to the Samsung Odyssey G9, which is considerably more expensive. So this is actually reasonably affordable, although it is worth noting the specs aren't quite as good so the resolution is and the refresh rate is a little bit lower so 165 hertz refresh rate maximum instead of 240 you'd get with a samsung but this is considerably cheaper and as you'll see it looks pretty awesome in a number of different games other specs include freesync premium pro a one millisecond response time and display hdr 400 capabilities as well so it is an interesting and gorgeous gaming monitor as you can see from multiple different angles and in different games as well it looks great for driving games fps games all sorts of other things i've been playing on it and testing out in a variety and you'll see different rooms different lighting conditions during the day and at night I wanted to test out a multitude of things to be able to show you what it looks like and talk about my experiences with it, what it's like for productivity reasons, editing videos and such like that. So I'll show you that in a second as well. But obviously the main selling point of this monitor is gaming and at 32 by nine, it looks magnificent as you'd expect. There's something to be said for super ultra wide gaming monitors and you can see why, because you get to see a lot more view side to side of what's going on. So it gives you a much more immersive experience. It doesn't have as much height as a traditional monitor but instead you get a much wider view which is really immersive it's something you need to experience but hopefully i'll put across in this video just how good that is Although you do need to bear in mind that sometimes i have to use a ultra wide lens so sometimes the edges might look a bit distorted so it doesn't really do it justice but here just to demonstrate how huge the thing is this is just when i unbox it and you can see just how massive it is so it is really big now you'll notice that it has a 1800r curve it's not actually as curved as the samsung g9 which is worth noting because that did cause a little bit of issues and it will vary depending on your preference whether you want a curved monitor or not but when you've got something this size having a little bit of a curve to it does really help because otherwise you find you have to move your eyes and your head a lot more and so a smaller curve isn't necessarily a good thing you don't necessarily want a flat panel a curve is very handy especially when you're being productive not so much for gaming that's fine because you're generally looking at the center of the screen and then the outside is a peripheral vision but you can see like alan wake for example looks really really good and it's got good dark blacks and bright light colors on it as well and it's fantastic in a number of ways but there are some other things to keep in mind as well is that not all games support 32 by 9 aspect ratio so you can see starfield here with black bars down the side and you'll often see that in cut scenes as well which can be a problem and if you want to watch a netflix film or something on there you're going to have the same problem but you do have alternatives so you can do picture by picture mode where you can see i've got two cables plugged in and then basically it's two monitors instead of one because you have basically two sides that are running at 16 by 9 this is great if you want to do some streaming and gameplay recording for twitch and youtube for example with the standard aspect ratio and still be able to see twitch chat or obs or whatever's going on on the left hand side of your monitor or if you want to do it for productivity reasons so you can see me here editing a video having chrome open so i can keep an eye on things there and also dragging videos around and checking things out it means you can be much more productive in an easy way in picture by picture mode and obviously it's like having two monitors but then you don't have a bezel between them and there's no gap there and there's less hassle and it looks great i've been running my g9 like this for a while so testing this aoc monitor out in the same way was important to me because i wanted to show what it was like now i want to show you some of the things to consider obviously it's a 49 inch monitor so measuring it was kind of pointless but side to side i want to show you know it is 49 inches across that way so it's not corner to corner it's left to right 
And you need to think about this in terms of the amount of space that is going to be taken up on your desk because it does take up a lot of room. Obviously, mounting it is another option potentially, but you can also see it's quite thick. So from a top-down shot, you'll see that the thing itself is quite a chunky monkey. It's not a thin thing by any means. And also you need to account for the size of the stand as well. So you need a relatively large and deep desk if you want to make the most of it. But that's not necessarily an issue. The rear isn't particularly flashy, but that's fine because you're mostly not going to see that anyway. The thing of note is it has three HDMI cable connections and one display port and then USB-C as well, which I'll get to in a second. You can see that the monitor is adjustable. Apologies for the focus problems out here. But there is a little bit of wobble in it. If you have a wobbly desk, that might well be worth bearing in mind that could be an issue but there's not too much i found that i wasn't really knocking the desk a lot and it was causing it to wobble but if you are moving it then it will be a problem now you get the best refresh rate as in 165 hertz out of this monitor if you're using it with a display port connection if you use hdmi you only get 75 hertz and there is a usb-c connection on there which you can also plug in which will give you 120 hertz so if you're going to do picture by picture, I would recommend two HDMI cables because I did an HDMI and DisplayPort cable here, connectivity that way. And you'll see that one screen is the full 16 by 9 aspect ratio and the other one for some reason is tiny with black bars around it. Now that seems to be because I was mixing DisplayPort and HDMI. So that's something to keep in mind. You have to go into the settings and play around with things, but also just use HDMI if you want to do picture by picture and display port if you want maximum refresh rate. So some messing about there required. You can see there are various different eco modes and obviously picture profiles as well. So there's a lot in the menu to play about with and go into, including game modes for various different scenes. So FPS, racing, RTS and other things. There's also a blue light functionality so it reduced the amount of blue light in there and you do have adaptive sync and low input lag and you can get a frame counter on it. So there's all the things to improve the picture quality and to minimize tearing and other issues like that and I definitely would recommend using adaptive sync and making sure that's turned on to make the most of that and obviously using display port cable to get the 165 hertz refresh rate it doesn't have as high a refresh rate as the g9 as I've mentioned but that doesn't really matter because in most games at 5120 by 1440p you're unlikely to get a mega high fps count anyway generally speaking unless you've got a seriously powerful system or you're playing sort of low-end games now one thing I will note is that I did find that the menu system on the monitor is particularly painful to use it has terrible ux honestly the buttons seem to change what they do depending on what screen you're on so you have to press right sometimes to select things other times you have to press the power button it's really fiddly and it is a faff however you can download software for this monitor so you can adjust it within windows assuming that you've connected a usb connection to it the monitor also has USB pass through, so you've got a KVM switch and you can plug other things into it. And you can get a DisplayPort connection via USB-C as well, which will give you up to 120 hertz. So there are a few different options. Also, the monitor as standard comes with a remote control, so you can control those settings that way. Unfortunately, this review sample was missing that remote control. It must have got lost with a previous reviewer or something. But the standard model, if you purchase it at retail, should have a remote. And that would probably make it less painful because it really is a terrible system. And I do want to emphasize that because it is fiddly. Not an issue if you set the monitor up in the way you want it and then just simply get on with gaming in that setup. But I found it to be a little bit fiddly. The other quirk of this system I found is that for some reason in picture by picture mode you have the ability to put the monitor into 4K resolution and you can do that for both displays so 3840 by 2160 which is illogical and it shouldn't work because when you split the monitor into two it should be 2560 by 1440 that should be the maximum resolution you can obviously do that and you can get 120 hertz refresh rate for both sides of the screen the other oddity i found is that sometimes in picture by picture mode when i reset my pc and gone back into windows is then reset the resolution to this so that it ends up with black bar at the top or bottom which is 3840 by 1080 which is for some reason the recommended resolution so you're losing some vertical height there 
which makes no sense. It's easy enough to then change it back to 2560 by 1440 and then that will then rectify the problem and put it into 16 by 9 resolution screens but otherwise a minor problem. Now this wasn't often an issue but it did occur. I did notice there was some discrepancy in the colours between the two panels though so I had to tweak a few things. Another point to note is that if you are struggling with this monitor when you do get it because you can't get it into 32 by 9 you have to go into the individual HDMI settings and set it to 5k 1k mode and then that'll allow you the 32 by 9 full resolution full aspect ratio. That was another thing that I had to fiddle around with. There was a lot of fiddling to get it set up right I found initially. Again if you're using it at the full aspect ratio for gaming all the time not a problem. I think if you're plugging in either one PC as I have been for picture by picture or maybe two devices like a laptop and a desktop or whatever else a console and a desktop then you might have a bit more struggle but generally the experience has been pretty good. Now I did notice there was some flicker in some games if the adaptive sync wasn't turned on so I would recommend doing that and making sure you've got that set up properly. Now in terms of productivity you can see that you can get quite a bit of space here. So in the standard 32 by 9 aspect ratio you can snap two windows in windows so that you can see here Chrome on the left for example to eventually resolve on the right. You see how massive they are with YouTube in cinema mode it takes up a large portion of the screen and then you can just carry on being productive on the other side so you can watch me and do other things too if you want to. Alternatively you can make use of the zones in Windows so basically grab a window drag it up to the top and then it will resize it automatically. This is in Windows 11 and you can then basically choose where each of your things are dropped into and the space they take up. You can see there's loads of room here so in YouTube Studio there's loads of space in Chrome and if you put Explorer into a corner, you'll find loads of space there. If you do it in like four quadrants, you can basically get loads done if you want to be as productive as possible. And so having an ultra wide screen like this is really helpful and it looks great, not just for gaming, but in other ways as well. The other thing that stands out for me is not only the visual quality, which you can see is really good, but also the speakers. I found that the speakers surprised me. With the Samsung G9, you don't actually get any speakers, and that was one of my complaints, is paying money for an expensive monitor and then not having any speakers. This monitor does have speakers. Now, they aren't amazing, obviously. They're not going to replace external speakers or even do better than a headset, but they still do deliver some pretty good sound, although I did find it, for some reason, mostly came from the right-hand side of the monitor. Now, HDR, I've mentioned, isn't great on this monitor, and I think HDR generally isn't in most monitors I've tested. There are only a few games out there that support HDR that I actually possess anyway that I can test with and I found it's just really washed out. Standard settings look great though. It's got a really good vibrant screen and looks really good. Very nice display. Obviously not to the level of OLED for example but it's still a very nice looking screen and delivers the goods in loads of different ways too. In the end this is a great monitor from what I've seen especially for the amount of money you're paying because it is reasonably affordable for the size of the thing when compared to other things out there similar size similar specs so it's worth considering if you want to game in super ultra wide and that's going to be a main use case it's pretty good and productivity is also really nice on there as well i do think that there are some things that are annoying about it like the ux of the menu but if you use the remote control you could probably get around that and comparatively it's really nice so if you've been looking at the g9 and thinking about it but it was too expensive then this might be a great alternative hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching subscribe for more you've made it right to the end of the video you brilliant legend you if you've enjoyed it click that subscribe button give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions if you really enjoyed it consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos, you might well find them interesting or useful, and most importantly, have a great life.